Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So it's been quite a while since I've made any kind of little mini albums or folios, those memory keeping kind of projects. And I've got still loads of like ticket stubs and just little brochures, leaflets, whatever from just different holidays. And I like to just kind of put them into something that's a bit like a junk journal. You just kind of throw all the bits and pieces in there. You can write a little bit of journaling on there there's no kind of order to it as such so i've made this little folio and you basically just take the wrap off here which is just a piece of twine that i've just plaited and then on the front here it says travel thumb i've just covered the corners there just so they're protected and then inside so it says memories and then you've got all these pockets and there's all these little kind of tuck spots. You've got photo mats. You can, you know, write whatever you want on them. I've distressed this quite heavily. In fact, I've got quite a bit in here. So I've got those. I've got that one. And I've got this one here. So you've got one, two, three. There's four pockets there. So you can get plenty of things in. Then I've got this page here, which I've kind of kept really simple. I've just got these two large photo mats or journaling pages just held together there with a little clip. And you, again, I can stick photos, staple things onto there. You know, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. I've kept this side plain as well because I've got lots of, again, loose kind of papers, boarding, passes, all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to attach there. Then I've got these four pockets. Again, I've got all these like little ephemera pieces here that I can write little messages and notes on about the holidays and then again I've got two larger photo mats at the back there I've heavily distressed it because in here is going to be a lot of my backpacking holidays so you know they want the the most glamorous of holidays but I've got really good memories so I wanted kind of a bit of a tatty worn kind of folio to keep all of that in and then on the back here I've got another big pocket and this photo mat and then I've got this little tuck spot and in here is just another photo mat and some more little bits there so there's kind of like a signature one signature in there which I've stitched through the side and then it's just held together with the twine here which I can just wrap around and then just tuck it underneath there so it holds it all together and then just that tiny little tassel on the side so today's video is sponsored by craft label and they very kindly sent me this beautiful 12 by 12 paper pad which is called bon voyage so as soon as i saw it i knew i had to make some kind of memory keeping album folio like i said i'm going to call this just a little traveler's journal folio kind of thing it's it's along that route it's a really lovely paper pad you've got some just gorgeous papers and you'll see me use quite a few from the pad here the craft label are very kindly giving me a discount code and that will be popping up now it will also be linked in the description box below you can only use the code on full price own brand product only and it's valid for two months again all of that information will be shared below so take advantage of that because it's a really good website they have all of your top brands there along with their own labels and much much more so let's get into the tutorial so first of all we'll start off with the cover so i'm going to break everything down because there's quite a few kind of mats and layers in terms of the decoration so i want to make sure i get all those measurements and i don't miss any so this is for the main outside of the folio mini album whatever you're going to turn this into so this is eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter so along one of the sides you want to score at four and four and a quarter and then just fold and burnish both of those I've then cut four pieces I've got this design which is going to go on the front and back and then I've got this design which is going to go on the inside here so you want to make sure that you keep that spine free and you'll notice that I've cut these so they're going to cover the whole part now if you want to do a mat and layer you can but these pieces here are four by the whole height which is eight and a quarter if you'd rather have a border then I would do three and three quarters by eight and that will give you that small border and I do do some of the layers on the pockets and stuff I'm going to keep a border but I just quite like having this completely covered and then I'm going to use my little corner protectors on the corners so I'm going to get this all stuck down so I've just stuck everything down and once that glue starts to really set that's going to become nice and strong and I've already just popped for, uh, three of the corner protectors there so these ones I'll try and find a link to them I've had them for quite a long time now but these measure it's always in mil and I'm not sure if they do it by this length but it's 15 mil long and then across there is two so 20 20 mil okay 
and they are two mil thick okay so these ones like i said i've had them a long time but you just want to pop them on depending on what it is on here then i would pop some tissue or something to protect it like a, or a little rag or something always make sure that they're pushed into the right angle sometimes when you get them they might be open see there's a bit more of a gap and it's not quite a right angle so do make sure that they're they're pushed in like so and then i'm just gonna pop that into the corner there i've just got my little craft hammer here i'm just gonna mute this bit because you don't need to hear the banging So that's the corners all decorated. And now I just want to start making it look a little bit worn and distressed. So I'm going to use a Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. I've got my blending brush here. And I'm just going to add some colour all the way around the sides here. And I'm going to be doing this throughout the mini album. I want it to look very worn. Okay, next I'm going to start on the left hand side here. So I've cut these strips. Again, the mats and layers that you decide to do may vary, but they're going to sit like this and each one is a pocket. And then I've got a couple of mat layers here. But the idea is, is that you can put tickets in there. You could put words of encouragement, anything you want, maybe some money. It's entirely up to you. So these pieces here, the largest pockets, this one's going to sit in here. They're all the same height, which is the height of the folio so it's eight and a quarter the brown piece on the back here the craft card is three and then the pattern paper is two and three quarters so that's that one then this one here again eight and a quarter by two and a half and then two and a quarter for the pattern piece you might decide to just have yours all as card stock and not put the pattern paper over but i just think it looks quite nice seeing little bits of it poking out the top this one is two and then the other one is one and three quarters. And then this one here is one and a half and then one and a quarter. I've popped tape on three sides. So I'll start with this one first. You just want to re remove the backing and you want the opening to be facing out on the left. You want to line this up with the score line and then there's obviously the side like so. Then these pieces here, are uh, three and a half by seven and i've put pattern paper the same size on both sides so it's a piece of craft card in between there so i'm going to pop that one in there I should just go i'm wondering whether to go down a little bit shorter mind you though, i quite like it when there's things hanging out the side so i think i'm going to leave that there because i think by the time i've got paper clips and bits and pieces it's quite nice to have that all hanging out but if you want to make that obviously a thinner piece then you can so then i've got my next one here so again just taking the backing off and then i'm going to lay this one down over the top so this is why i've added the spine because you're going to start to create some bulk now so it will be able to handle that and then the next size down and just do that until you stuck them all down and then what i'm actually going to do with this one i'm actually going to cut this one in half so it was seven but i'm going to take this down to three and a half and i've just inked the side up again but now i quite like having kind of different pieces in there so you can see now you've got all these bits that you can pull out i might end up putting tabs on them like i said i think it's gonna be quite nice to have things coming out the side so we'll see how it goes but that's everything now on the left hand side Okay, so that's all of that stuck down. Then I've got these pieces here because I want to make a stepped pocket. So they're going to go like so. Now, this is four inches wide, but you want these to be three and seven eighths of an inch because when you close this, it's going to push them out. So I've just taken them in slightly. But if you've added a quarter inch spine here, because maybe you're decorating yours and adding more, then 
this will you know it's four inches wide still then these can all be four inches as well but i've just taken them in slightly so they're all so you can see they're three and seven eighths and then this one is four and seven eighths of an inch and then again the same width but this height is four and three eighths and then this height is three and seven eighths and then this one is three and three eighths so i've added my double-sided tape again to three sides leaving the top open so you've got all these pockets again so you can stick lots of tickets and just receipts just bits and pieces that we pick up from our travels and then i'm hugging this to the corner the outer corner don't butt it up to the fold there keep it close to the the edge here that one and again I'm going to do the same with this one and just stick them all on top so they all line up nicely but now I can pop these in let's pop one let's flip that one around pop that one in the bottom there again I might li put little tabs on these as well but now that piece is going to go in here and again you can see how it all sits nicely in there it's just already it feels like a nice piece I'm not sure about adding more pockets at this stage. I'm thinking about adding maybe a thin one down here, but next I want to get this attached to here and then I can kind of see what I want to do with it. So I'm going to stitch this into the cover. I'm going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. Very easy to do. First of all, you want to lay down your three holes where you want them to go. So I've got my ruler here and it's eight and a quarter. So I've just marked the halfway point, which is four and one eighth. So I've just put a pen mark there. And then I've just come down two inches. So two inches there, and then I've come up two inches there. So you've got roughly two inches between those sections. So now I'm gonna get those punched. I'm gonna use my crocodile bite and I'm gonna use the one eighth of an inch hole size because this is a thin spine. But if you don't have this, then you could just use your pokey tool and just pierce through like so and thread your, your thread through. But I am gonna just neaten this up with my I'm then going to sit this piece here I'm going to pop it on this side and I'm just going to make sure it's got equal amounts either end here and I'm just going to sit it over the hole and I'm just going to put a little mark again like so okay so I can just see those three marks so just as long as you can see it and then you want to punch your hole again Okay, so that's all in place. And because you push that across to this side, my hole hasn't interfered with any of this. You might prefer to do all this before you start sticking into it, but I just think it's a bit easier to get that all in because then you know kind of what you're working with and the, the thickness of things. Then I've just got some baker's twine here. So I'm going to, I want to have my ends on the outside. So I'm going to start, I'm going to come in from the outside. I'm just going to, I have got a needle big enough, but I think I can just, yeah, I can do this by hand. So you want to come in from the outside there and then make sure everything's the right way up. So then I'm going to come through this piece as well. Like so. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom. And then again, through this one here. And just make sure everything is nice and taut there okay then i'm going to go i'm going to pull quite a bit of this through because i'm going to be keeping this also to as a like a wrap around the journal so i'm, I'm going to be quite generous with the length here again keep that all nice and taut close it up and then i'm going to come right the way past the middle one and up to the top one and I'm going to go in there so that's how it looks from the outside okay and then in to this one here like so. so again just pull everything till it's nice and taut and then you're going to go back in you might need your pokey tool or if you've got a needle it'll be fine but you want to go back in that middle hole like so as you can see it's nice and neat inside there and just follow this piece through the middle one
And again, just start to pull everything through. You can see there, once I start to pull both of these pieces, everything will tighten up, okay? So just keep pulling that until you've got them how you want. And now I'm gonna take, and I'll just snip to the ends and then you wanna make sure that one piece is one side of the, of the string and then the other the other side and again just pull it nice and taut and then I'm just going to tie this in a knot you have to be careful with baker's twine because it can snap if you pull it too tight but that should be fine I can add some charms onto that now but what's also going to happen is I'm going to kind of twist these and these are going to act as my little kind of closure and then I can just kind of wrap that I'm going to put some charms on the end I just wanted it to be one whole piece but already now that's a really nice little keepsake um, and I'm really pleased with how this is looking. So now I know how much more I can add inside because it doesn't matter now if, if this is even like that bulky, this string will still kind of hold it together. Okay, so I've decided to add another pocket onto the back of that signature there. So this piece here measures three by eight and then this is going to be my little kind of photo mat, journaling mat, whatever you want to call it. This is three and a half by seven. And then I've got that pattern piece, which is three and a quarter by six and three quarters. And you'll want two, because I've obviously put that on the back as well. Now, I've also gone and added these little one inch circles. And on this one, I'm going to add it to the side. And I think it's just then, it just shows that it's something that you would pull out. I'm going to kind of make the ends a bit tatty. I might distress some of these a bit more with my distress tool as well. But I've just popped some tape on the three sides here. Again, leaving the one side open so you can pop things in there. The thinner the tape, then the more room you've got to add more photo mats and things like that. So I used a thicker one earlier on, but I've dropped down to a thinner one now. But I'm just going to line that up along the bottom there like so and then I've got that now which will sit in there Oops, is that glued down let's do that way for the minute we'll sit in there perfectly and you'll see the others that I've added here and now they start to stick out and that's fine that's what I want and then I can once I've tied these up you know you can just kind of wrap them wherever you know and then hook that under there that's kind of I want these bits to be kind of sticking out the sides So I think I finished it. I will probably add bits and pieces once I start adding my own tickets and the, the memories that I have. But you'll see I plaited the string or the twine there. So now it's nice and strong. It's just one long piece. I've also just added this little tassel, which I found in my stash. I've used these tiles here, these letter tiles, and I've got uh, travel fun on the front. And then inside I've got memories. Again, I might add some more kind of words once I start filling it out. And also in the paper pad, you get a 12 by 12 sheet with all of these kind of, I guess, flight cards. And I'll show you here. And you can just cut them down. 
So I took one of those and they're going to be really useful for me to write, again, memories on. I can staple things onto this, more tickets and um, yeah, just kind of fill it up. Like, here I've just added some more of these kind of um, photo mats, I guess, or journal mats. So I've just got the pattern paper there and then on the back, again, I've just stressed it all. So I wanted it to look really worn and, and dirty <laughs> because it just really kind of represents that backpacking kind of time uh, this one I've left plain because again I've got lots of loose papers I think it's just gonna be quite handy to just clip them into the clip the board or clip there I've got some other ones here as well so I can always you know pop a few more on there if I want to and then here I've added more of these so again I can write on the back I folded them and distressed them again made them look like they've been in your back pocket and things like that and then I've got those two larger ones that you saw me make and then I showed you that one again with another photo mat and I can put more in the pocket there and then I've added this piece here on the back which is literally just like a little flap it's like a tuck spot to just tuck these pieces so this one measures I think it was six yeah six by two and then six by one and three quarters was the pattern piece I just put some red tape along there and stuck that in and then I've got this picture mat photo mat which is three and a quarter by seven and a half. There's some random sizes because I've just used a lot of scraps. And then this piece was seven and a quarter by three and you want two pieces again to stick on the back. And then really it's just a place to just shove all those other little bits and pieces. I can just tuck them in there. There's some more of these little cards here. They just sit in there and that just kind of, it stops it falling out the side. And you can see it's it's already starting to become nice and bulky, which is what I want. And then I can just wrap this around and then in fact no that if I went that way then that was on the back so if I go if I wrap it from behind first kind of like so that's it and then the knot is on the front which I quite kind of like I think I'm going to try and fray these as well I just need to sit there and kind of I need to get like an old brush on there or something to just fray that I think it'll look quite nice but there you have it I might put a little date and stuff on the back there as well for the holiday but um, I'm really pleased with this one so I hope that's given you some inspiration obviously you don't have to make it as bulky as I have and this will work for many different occasions it could be someone's wedding it could be like a theme park inspired little folio with your tickets from the theme park and, um, and photos and so on from that memory you can do all sorts with these so make sure you head over to check out the craft label website and again you've got my code to use there if you want to and I'll also be popping up some tutorials now which you may want to go and watch next because they'll be down that kind of mini album folio memory keeping kind of route and as always thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon